Hello and welcome. Today we are going to make our own herbal shampoo. Pay no attention to my hair because I am on the third day without washing and I'm trying to get used to washing less, but I didn't want to wash again until I had my shampoo ready. So I might be looking a little messy, but that's all right. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own herbal shampoo at home. Like literally it's super simple. Anybody can do it. Um, you can get most of this stuff if you have a health food store or like a natural section at your grocery store. You can usually find some of this stuff or most of the stuff. And you can customize it to your specific hair type or your scalp needs or whatever. Today I'm making a shampoo that's specifically supposed to help me with hair regrowth because I have androgenic alopecia. So it's going to help me with regrowth and also it's going to help to enhance the color of my brunette hair. And I'll talk to you about some of the different ways you can customize it for your specific needs as well. So the method that I use to make herbal shampoo and vinegar rinse, which we're also going to make today, uh, was taught to me by my mother and she learned from Jean Rose who is a very famous and prolific herbalist in America. If you are interested in making your own herbal body products I would highly recommend the book The Herbal Body Book by Jean Rose. This is my copy of it and you can find this very inexpensively on sites like eBay or thrift books. I, I just looked on thrift books and you can get this for five dollars and 29 cents. It was written in 1976 and it is packed full of amazing information. Um, Jean Rose really goes into detail about the science of why these formulations work but also she has simple easy to follow recipes that are very customizable. So um, this page talks about how to properly shampoo your hair and then this talks about how to make herbal shampoo. She's got different herb blends for all different hair types and different uh, things that might be wrong like oily hair, dry hair, um, dandruff, red hair, brown hair, brunette hair, blue hair, <laughs> blonde hair. Um, so yeah, there's just so much information in here. I would highly recommend this book. I'm also going to be making a blog post on my website, lifeplusindy.com about my experience with making herbal shampoo. If you want to check that out, it should be up in the next couple days. And I will always link to anything that I talk about in the video down in the description box below. So if you want to know more, go check down there. All right, got my green tea ready. Got to have a drink. So the first thing we're going to do is make an herbal infusion. And an infusion is just a really strong tea. You can make an herbal infusion overnight for a couple hours, but we're going to do ours for about 20 minutes. And that's really all you need for shampoo. We're going to be make, making an eight ounce bottle of shampoo today. I'm going to use this glass pan to make my infusion. I would always recommend using non-metal pans. You can use enamel or glass. Here are all the ingredients that we're going to need today. I am using lavender and rosemary, but you can use any herbs of your choice. Lavender and rosemary are both good for hair loss and also for brunette hair. We're going to be using Dr. Bronner's Liquid Castile Soap, unscented. I have an empty bottle there to store our shampoo in. I'm going to be using rosemary and lavender essential oils in my shampoo, but as always, you can use the essential oil of your choice. This little bottle right here is a natural preservative called GeoGuard Ultra that I'm going to be using to preserve my shampoo. And I'll talk more about that as we go. And finally, I have a fine mesh strainer so we can strain our herbs from our water. You can also use a cheesecloth or a very fine cloth or anything you have that's very fine that water can travel through but herbs can't. If you do want to get yourself one of these strainers, I will put a link to where I got mine down below. So believe it or not, that's all you need to make your shampoo. You just need herbs, essential oil, liquid castile soap, water, and optionally a preservative. You do not have to have this. So the first thing we're gonna do is weigh out our herbs. I'm gonna turn on my scale here. And you're going to want to use one ounce total of herbs. I'm going to use a half ounce of rosemary and a half ounce of lavender. I'm just going to pour this into, you can use any container that you have, a bowl, a cup, it doesn't matter. I'm using this measuring cup because that's what I'm going to use to measure my liquid out later. So why dirty up more than one container? And an ounce is like a lot more than it looks like, okay? Alright, that's, that's exactly half an ounce. Oh, that smells so good, that fresh rosemary. And now I'm going to weigh out my lavender. So I'm just going to continue pouring in here because it can all be mixed together until we get to one ounce. 
And it doesn't make, you don't have to be exactly perfect. Like you can go over a little bit. There we go. I got it to exactly one ounce somehow. So I purchased my rosemary and lavender at my local natural grocers. If you don't have a store in your area that sells like bulk herbs, then you can get them online. I would recommend Mountain Rose Herbs or Star West Botanicals, both of which I will link to down below. Or you can always go into your spice aisle at your grocery store and see what they have. Sage is especially good for dark hair. Um, so if you have dark hair, sage is a really good one that you can just get at the grocery store. Like you can get it out of the spice aisle. Of course, I would always recommend getting organic herbs from a reputable supplier, but if all you can get is sage from the grocery store, that will work for your herbal shampoo to get you started. You can also use herbs like lemongrass, chamomile, and those can usually be found at your grocery store as well. And I'm going to make up some charts for my website, but just to give you an idea, if you have blonde or red hair, you might want to stick to lighter color herbs like chamomile and calendula. If you have dark brown or brunette or black hair, then you can stick to herbs like sage and rosemary. Some herbs can be used for all hair types like lavender, horsetail is another good one for your hair, red clover is good for all hair types. So just do your research and try to find herbs that you think um, would suit you best or the herbs that you have access to. Nettle is another good herb for dark hair and I usually like to put nettle in my uh, shampoo. It's also supposed to be good for hair loss, but I don't have any right now. I'm waiting on mine to arrive. So today we're just gonna do rosemary lavender for my shampoo. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer our herbs that we measured out into our pan. And I am thinking this pan is too small, y'all. I think I'm going to have to switch this out. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all the water I need in there and the herbs. So I'm going to switch it out for a larger pan. I bought this Corningware Vision pan at a thrift store and I'm determined to use it for something. It is small. I'm going to switch it out for this enamel pan that I have instead. And that's going to leave us plenty of room for this infusion. So then we're going to measure out 10 ounces of spring water. I have a jug of spring water here that I'm going to use. Now, if you don't have anything else, you can use tap water. But if you have access to spring water or distilled water even, that's a better choice. But any water will really work. Okay, so I am going to measure out 10 ounces. I just realized you couldn't see me pouring that. 10 ounces, which is also the equivalent of one and a quarter cup or 300 milliliters. Okay, and then we're just gonna pour that right over our herbs in the pan. Next, I'm gonna put my heat on low or medium low, lowish, and we're gonna stir this up, try to get all the herbs saturated with water, and we're gonna gently bring this to a boil. This is gonna smell so nice too. It smells like herb soup. <laughs> your house will always smell really good when you're making your own herbal bath and body products. Or at least your kitchen will. So you don't have to stir that constantly. I just stir it enough to get the herbs nice and wet and then I'll just kind of leave it until it starts to simmer. Okay, now we have what I would call a very gentle boil or the beginning of a simmer. So we're gonna turn the heat down to the very lowest setting and we're gonna simmer this for about five minutes. I just stir it occasionally while I'm simmering it. You don't have to stir it constantly or anything. And if you have herbs that really seem to absorb the water, you can add a little bit more spring water as well. The point is you just wanna keep it very gently simmering. You don't want like a hard boil or anything. So see the gentle bubbles there? That's what we're that's what we're looking for. And we want to try to keep it like that for about five to 10 minutes. I usually do five. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water at this point because I feel like a lot of it is burning off. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a splash more and you'll just kind of get like an eye for that after doing it. I'm going to simmer this about two minutes more. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit just so we can bring that back up to a simmering temperature. But it's okay if you feel like your water's burning off to add more. And we are gonna put this through the fine mesh strainer. So you're gonna get more liquid than it looks like. I feel like I said my liquid was burning off. I meant it's like evaporating out. You know what I mean. <laughs> but I just try to keep it like a soupy texture. You don't want your herbs to absorb all the water. All right, it's been a little over five minutes, so I'm gonna turn the heat off. 
And then we are gonna let this sit and steep for 10 minutes. And you don't need to stir it, you can just set your timer for 10 minutes and leave it here. After our 10 minutes is up, then we are gonna strain our herbs and mix up our shampoo. That's the fun part, I think. All right, it's been 10 minutes. So I am going to strain the herbs through the mesh strainer. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take the strainer and I'm gonna put it over a, I'm gonna use this glass measuring cup, but you can use any kind of like non-metal bowl, cup, container, whatever, to strain your herbs through. And again, you don't have to use a strainer. You can use a uh, cheesecloth or anything fine. All right, so I hope you can see what I'm doing. I actually think I'm gonna show you from the other side. Here we go. Now you might be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better here. I'm just doing it in the sink. We're just gonna strain it right through and get all that liquid out that we can. And you can even like push it down a little bit and try to get all that liquid out of there. All right, and now we are left with this. Let's see, it's a little less than eight ounces um, of a very strong herbal tea or herbal infusion. Oh, it smells so good. You could literally drink this. It smells really good. Now with the leftover herbs that you have in the pan, um, you can either Put these if you have a compost this would be really good to put into your compost if you don't i just take them outside and scatter them around and return them to the earth you can do that as well or you could throw them in the trash can because they're going to go back to the earth eventually that way anyway if you don't live in a place where you can scatter them around your yard all right now we're going to add our castile soap so we want to add about one ounce of liquid castile soap which ends up being about 30 milliliters or two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna measure out two tablespoons. That usually works fine for me. Like I said, you don't have to be exactly precise with this. There's no, it's not like it's gonna be bad if you go over or under a little tiny bit. About two tablespoons should do the trick. Then we just wanna stir that up. It turns a nice milky brown color. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it smells nice. All right, now we're gonna add our essential oils. So you just wanna add a few drops of whatever essential oil. I'm gonna probably add about three or four drops, four or five drops, however much went in there, of lavender and a couple drops of rosemary. One, two, three three, four, that should be good. And we're gonna stir that up. Oh, and I forgot to say, if you want to have a little more suds, you can add more Castile soap. You can add up to four tablespoons and I think that would be fine. So like, we'll add one more, we'll add three. So add anywhere from two to four, just depending on your needs. And you may just have to play around with this and see how you like it but I usually do it it just depends on my mood but I'll I usually do two or three tablespoons and that seems to work fine for me but you can do up to like a quarter cup so the last thing we need to add is our preservative now I just want to talk to you for a minute about this you do not have to use this this little bottle cost me about $20 and this is the first time I'm ever using a preservative in my shampoo if you don't use a preservative, then you need to store this in the refrigerator or just keep a very small bottle in the shower and keep a, the larger container of it in your refrigerator for up to a week. Because this is basically just an herbal tea with soap in it and it will get funky just like if you left tea out on the counter for a week, you know what I mean? So you do need to keep it refrigerated when you're not using it if you don't use a preservative. Or you could just mix it all up in your bottle, keep this whole bottle in the fridge and just take it out when you go to the shower. It will be cold, but that's good for your scalp. Get used to it. <laughs> or you can use a preservative like this GeoGuard Ultra that I'm gonna use. And if you use the preservative, this prohibits the growth of mold and bacteria and any kind of funky stuff that might grow in there and you'll be able to keep the shampoo in your shower for months if you use a preservative. And this is a natural substance, it's just two natural acids that, present, that prevent anything from growing in there. The recommended usage rate is 0.5 to 1% of this per your liquid. So I'm gonna use about a half teaspoon of this, which is just about 1% of eight ounces. 
and I just calculated that by I did 8 ounces by 1% which is 0 0.08 and then I just looked up 0 0.08 ounces in teaspoons and it was like 0.48 so we're gonna do half a teaspoon I hope that makes sense so I'm just gonna use a little dropper to fill up my half teaspoon here like this there we go maybe I'll, I'll do it just a little under and that's fine okay and then I'm just gonna pour this right into the mixture and stir it in and that should prevent anything gross from gro growing in there and allow me to keep this in the shower without it going bad for several months although it will not take me several months to use this and the last thing we have to do is just transfer this into our shampoo bottle measuring cup so that's why I like to use the measuring cup because it has a spout on it so it makes it a lot easier to pour now you probably also want to use a funnel which I do not have right now so I'm just gonna try my best to pour this in here without spilling it all over the place God help me and you can also you can already see how it's like sudsing up a little bit in there when you pour it once I uh, poured the castile soap in there it turned like a greenish brownish color but it smells very nice. It might look like swamp water, but it smells very good. And it will clean your hair very gently. So this is a 16 ounce bottle, because that's all I have on hand right now. And it's all, it only makes about eight ounces of shampoo. So if you want to buy empty bottles and make this, um, you only need about an eight ounce bottle. So there we have it, our herbal shampoo. Now you can also put a label on this. If you're gonna keep it in the shower, keep in mind you'll need something waterproof. I usually just write directly on the bottle. Um, so I can differentiate between my shampoo and Andrew's shampoo. But right now he's using some herbal shampoo that he already has. So I'm not gonna write anything on here, but once I have a bottle for both of us, I'll just write like C and A on them. <laughs> So I know who's into, who's is whose, but you can always make a really nice, pretty label and put like rosemary, lavender shampoo, whatever, whatever. And I cannot wait to use this on my hair, y'all. And like I said, this is not a precise recipe. You can add more or less castile soap, more or less oils. You don't have to use the preservatives. Basically, the gist of it is just make an herbal infusion with about 10 ounces of water, strain that, add some castile soap and essential oil to it, and you have an herbal shampoo. It is that simple. It cleanses very gently, and if you're not used to using herbal shampoo, it may leave your hair feeling like a little bit oily so I would always recommend following this with a clarifying apple cider vinegar rinse that will help your hair feel normal and not have like that weighted down feeling um, that you get if you're going from a traditional shampoo to an herbal shampoo eventually that will go away but if you've ever tried to switch from regular shampoo to herbal shampoo you know what I mean like your hair can get it almost feels oily or like heavy but if you use a vinegar rinse afterwards it will help to clarify your hair and get any like residue that's on there left behind out so making an apple cider vinegar rinse is very similar to making shampoo but we're going to use vinegar instead of soap i gotta clean out my pan because i'm going to use the same pan um i just went outside to return those herbs those used up herbs to the earth and thank mother earth um i always say a little thank you prayer when i return something back to the earth and it's snowed outside it is a beautiful winter night it is so gorgeous out there it's not snowing anymore but there's like a light dusting of frost and snow all over everything and it looks really beautiful oh and another thing i wanted to tell you about the shampoo is that don't expect it to have like tons of suds and stuff like a commercial shampoo would because it doesn't include any detergents or like sodium laurel sulfate and all that kind of stuff that makes commercial shampoo suds up a lot. It is a much more gentle clean. You will get some suds, but just massage it into your scalp and it's going to clean it really nicely. But just don't expect it to behave the same way as like a bottle of Pantene, okay? <laughs> All right, once again, we are going to weigh out one ounce of herbs, just like we did with the shampoo. And I'm gonna do the same thing, half lavender, half rosemary. You can use the same herbs or different herbs, whatever herbs you wanna use for your hair. Um, I'm just doing a, a rosemary lavender kind of thing today. And my cup is wet, but that's okay, because I'm gonna pour water in here afterwards and we'll get out what's left. Okay, that's a little over half an ounce, but that's all right. And then we'll fill the rest up with rosemary. 
And we're just doing exactly the same thing. We're gonna make an herbal infusion, but instead of adding soap, we're gonna add apple cider vinegar. Okay, perfect. Wow, I got it exactly one ounce. Look at me go. Now, if I was making this not for a video, just for myself, I probably would have had the infusions going at the same time, like one in each pan. Um, but because I wanted to show you step by step how to do each thing, that's why I'm doing them separately. And like, if you only have one pan you can use, you know, you might have to do them separately. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave all those herbs that stuck in there. And then I'm gonna measure out about 10 ounces, again, may go a little over like I did last time, of spring water. Again, you can use spring water or distilled water, or if nothing else, you can use tap water, but I would use spring water or distilled water if possible. And now I'm just gonna transfer this into our pan. And yeah, just don't, don't worry too much about what kind of water. I used tap water in this for many years and it never caused me any problems. I just use spring water now because I like to. When I used to live in hot springs, you could go get water directly from the underground springs. And that is what the water that we would drink, the water that I would use to make this kind of stuff. I really miss being able to do that. Now I have to buy like these huge jugs at the store and I can't just go get it for free from the earth anymore. Someday, someday I'll go home again. And anytime we do go home to visit, we bring back as much spring water as we can possibly fit into our car so we can have it for as long as possible. Okay, so now same thing. I'm just gonna turn the heat on medium low until this comes to a nice bubble, a nice simmer. And then we will steep it for another 10 minutes, just like we did before. All right, we've been simmering for five minutes. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna let it sit here and steep for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and our herbal infusion is ready. We are now gonna strain it into the container just like we did before. So I just rinsed out my strainer and we're gonna pour this into the measuring cup. There we go. Just get all of that good herb water out of there. Sometimes you can kind of like let gravity help you get the rest of it out. Okay, here we go. Another approximately eight ounces of herbal infusion. And now we're gonna add in our apple cider vinegar. So I just have this natural grocer's brand organic apple cider vinegar, raw unfiltered with the mother. But you can use any kind, and I'm gonna shake this up. You can use any kind of apple cider vinegar. You can use the filtered kind that you get at the grocery store. It doesn't matter as long as it's apple cider vinegar. Um, this is just what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar to my eight ounces of herbal infusion. My cup, of course, has the little measuring notches on it, so I'm just gonna fill this up until it gets to one and a quarter cup. There we go. Okay, perfect. So it's one part apple cider vinegar to four parts herbal infusion. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a little essential oil of rosemary, just a couple drops. And then I'm gonna add a couple drops of lavender essential oil. And that kind of helps masking the smell of apple cider vinegar, which is very strong. And I'm gonna stir it up. If you are afraid of your hair smelling like apple cider vinegar, don't be. The smell dissipates very quickly and your hair will not smell like vinegar, I promise you. I have used this many, 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 many hundreds of times and my hair has never ever smelled like vinegar. You will smell it in the shower when you're putting it on your scalp, but your hair will not smell like that once you rinse it out. I'm also going to add some of this preservative to my vinegar rinse. If you don't add preservative, then once again, you need to store this in, refri in the refrigerator for up to a week. You can also just make this up fresh every time. If you're like one of those people that just washes your hair once a week, you can just make up a fresh vinegar rinse every time and just use the whole thing on your hair. You can totally do that. Um, I am gonna be storing mine in the shower and I'm gonna use this preservative. What I would used to do is just store it in the fridge and take it to the shower with me and then make a new one every week. So those are all possibilities. So once again, I'm gonna use half a teaspoon of the preservative. So this preservative is really considered a specialty product. You can't even buy it on Amazon. I buy it from a company called Simple, I think it's Simple Earth, Simply Earth. 
um, is where I get mine and I will link to it down below if you're interested in this. But it does make any of your water-based homemade preparations last for months and you don't have to worry about anything gross growing in them. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to mix it all up and then we're going to put it in our bottle. I'm just using another empty 12 ounce bottle. You can buy empty bottles for your homemade beauty supplies from Mountain Rose Herbs. Oops. I would recommend using a funnel for this. And don't try and pour it like I'm doing it, but I'm doing okay. We're doing all right. Okay, that's it. So if you use this in the shower, make sure you shake it up really well before you use it. Shampoo and rinse. Shake them up really well before you use them. And I can't reiterate this enough. If you don't use the GeoGuard Ultra, then you need to store these in the refrigerator or in your shower for only one to two days max. And if it smells funky, throw it out, okay? Because this is a natural product that will go bad. So my natural hair care routine from now on is going to be, I'm gonna wash my hair with the herbal shampoo, I'm gonna rinse my hair with the apple cider vinegar rinse, and then after my hair, after I get out of the shower, I let my hair completely dry, then I brush it, and then I put a couple drops of rosemary essential oil onto my palm. I get my boar bristle brush, boar bristle brush, <laughs> that's hard to say. And I just kind of rub it on my palm to get the oil all over it. And then I brush it through my hair like this. And then I throw my hair over and I brush it through like that. I don't use a carrier oil uh, when I put rosemary essential oil on my hair because I'm not sensitive to it and I don't have any problems with it. But if you've never used it before, you might want to consider mixing it in a little bit of sweet almond oil um, before you put it onto your scalp. Just throwing that out there. Everybody's different. And anytime you use any new essential oil, they are very, very, very concentrated. So you might wanna mix a little in a carrier oil and put some on your arm or something and wait a couple hours and just make sure you don't have any kind of reaction to it before you use it in any of your beauty products. It, and that's especially if you have sensitive skin, but everybody can benefit from doing that. Thank you guys so much for joining me today while I made my shampoo and vinegar rinse. I'm about to go wash my hair because like I said, I'm on my third day and it's getting to that point y'all where it needs to be washed. I'm sure it looked quite lanky in this video. Um, but like I said, I didn't want to wash it until I finished making this so I could use my new stuff. Right now I'm down to washing every two days and uh, that's working pretty well for me so far. I would really like to get down to where I only have to wash once a week, um, but I'm slowly making progress towards that. <laughs> this was really fun. I love making stuff like this. I am on a mission in 2023 to make all of my own herbal products from everything that I use as far as beauty goes and all of my household stuff as well. So make sure you subscribe and follow along if you wanna see that. The only things that I don't feel like I'm gonna be able to make are uh, makeup, but I am using a very high quality mineral makeup that I get from Carrie Gran. And by the way, I have a referral code for that. If you're interested in it, you can get $10 off your first order if you use my code down in the description box. Um, it, I have the mineral foundation, blush, and eyeshadow and concealer and they also sent me a free lip whip because if you spend a certain amount of money you get a free product and their lip balm is so good. Um, I need to cover that in another video and just show you guys how good that stuff is. I am not wearing any of it now. Okay, I'm wearing no makeup right now. Um, but when I do wear makeup, it is fantastic. Really high quality, excellent ingredients. I w I'm not trying to make this like a sponsored post or anything. It just came to my mind and I thought I would share it with you. Um, and if you're not sure, you can get a sampler, like a sample of their foundations in either light, medium, or dark. It only costs $15. And then once you decide which uh, shade is right for you, then you can put that $15 towards a full-size bottle. So just throwing that out there if anybody's interested. It's really good stuff. But that's the only thing that I just don't feel like I can make myself. I am going to make lip balm. So I don't plan on buying any of their lip stuff. I just used the free one that they gave me, but I'm gonna make my own lip balm. But as far as like foundation and blush and eyeshadow, like I just don't feel equipped to make that myself. And I would rather buy it from a 
professional company. So that's what I'm going to do there. But everything else, like all my bath and body products and stuff like soap, shampoo, moisturizers, lotions, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to be making myself over the next few weeks to months. Update! Thank you for staying till the end of the video. I washed my hair with my new shampoo and rinse and oh my god y'all it feels fantastic. It has so much volume. It feels so good and it smells so good. And this is after I brushed it and put the rosemary oil in. Um, highly recommend 10 out of 10 on the herbal shampoo and rinse. Um, definitely don't have any of that like residue in my hair that I've had in the past from from using store-bought like natural shampoos. And that's because I use the vinegar rinse after. It just softens your hair and makes it feel so fantastic. So I know the herbal shampoo might look a little grungy. It looks, like I said, it looks like swamp water, but it makes your hair fantastic. It makes your hair so beautiful, y'all. And I like, I don't have a lot of hair to work with, but it's, it really, really improves it. Just, so just wanted to give you a little update there on how nice it was to use that. So thanks again for watching, y'all. I hope you're having a wonderful new year. I hope you have a great night and I will see you with a new vlog very soon.